Okay, so in our previous lesson, we, we talk about two special kind of distribution, which is uniform distribution and exponential distribution. And this is the third kind, it's normal distribution, okay? So the normal curve is often called bell curve. As you can see, it looks like a bell, sometimes called Gaussian distribution, okay? After Carl's Friedrich Gauss, which is a great mathematician and who actually came up with a lot of properties of this normal distribution, okay? Um, we're gonna talk about normal curve and the most interesting property, one of the most interesting property of normal curve is this. Almost okay. Almost sixty eight percent of the data lies within one standard deviation from the mean. Okay, remember in our last class. I told you that, you know, when we say within one standard deviation, within two standard deviation, it has some um, important, um, you know, uh, we, can, we can actually find some important information when we know what is the probability within one standard deviation or within two standard deviation. So for example, if the curve is a normal curve and if you find the probability within one standard deviation, that means almost 68%, more than 68% of the area lies within one standard deviation. Okay, so the probability of X between, you know, between one standard deviation from the mean is almost 68%. So the probability of, probability of X, within two standard deviation in case of normal curve is 94, a little bit more than 95% percentage. So 95% of the data of the area lies within this, within two standard deviation, okay? Almost 99 or almost 100, 99.74% data lies within three standard deviation in normal curve. And this is a standard, this is not a standard normal, it's just a simple uh, example of normal curve, okay? So there is another normal curve, which we call a standard normal curve and sometimes called a Z distribution. What is this? We'll talk in a minute. Let's look at one example. Okay, here is one example. The weights W of the student in a calculus class are normally distributed with a mean mu of 150 pound. Okay, what is given here is mu is given 150 and the standard deviation is given 25. It scales the normal curve and standard normal curve to represent the probability that the weight of the student in the class is from 160 pound to 180 pound. Okay, first of all, let us talk about normal curve. All right, so mean is, this one is your mean. Mean is given 150, okay? And standard deviation is 25. So it looks like this kind. So if you want to draw the standard normal curve, let me draw the standard 
normal curve mu equal to zero and standard deviation is always one, okay? Well, that's not important. Just remember, in, in the normal curve, it's a raw distribution, raw normal distribution, which is 150 in this case, but a standard normal curve is always mean equals zero. Expected value is always zero in the standard normal curve. It is sometimes called a Z curve. Now, we want to calculate the probability from 160 to 180. Okay, 160 to 180. If this one is 150, then your 160 is somewhere here. Okay, this is your 160 to 180. This is your 180. So we are talking about this area right here. Now, how do we trans, you know, how do we transform this into this curve? Where is that 160 lies here? Okay, what is the Z value? This is a Z curve. What is the Z value for 160? We need to figure that out and we'll draw that graph here, okay? so. Z value of Z value of 160 equals Z value of 180 equals. There is a formula that we'll be using. Okay, the simple formula is this. I think it is given somewhere here. This is how we can transform the given normal distribution to standard normal distribution by using this formula. Z equals X minus mu over standard deviation. What is X? It is, the, it is the variable of a normal distribution. Mu is the um, mu is the mean of a normal distribution and sigma is the standard normal deviation of normal distribution. Okay, what it means is in this case, we know the formula. Z equals X minus mu over a standard deviation of this data. So here mu equals 150. Okay, and then the standard deviation is 25. And then X in this case, this is your X, X is 160. So basically it will be 160 minus mu is 150 divided by standard deviation is 25. And you can calculate that, how much that going to be, okay? How much is this? In the same way, Z is score for 180 is your X value, the, the variable X is 180. It's coming from the normal curve, which is 180 minus mu is, again, coming from the standard, uh, I mean, coming from the normal curve, which is 150 divided by 25, and that's gonna give me, let me just write the formula first and then that one. So the formula is X minus mu over the standard deviation, which is 180 minus 150 divided by 25. And let me know what do you get in decimal. I believe this one is 1.2, this one is uh, 0 0.4, is that right? What do you get? Yeah. Okay, everyone is okay with that? So Z value, so when you transfer this Z, 160 changes into 0 0.4. So where is 0 0.4? It is somewhere here, right? It is somewhere here. This is our 0 
and 180 transfer, transformed to 1.2. So 1.2 is somewhere here. So this is your standard normal curve, which is called Z curve. And we want, we, we want to find the area of this part, area of this. So area of this, how do we find that? Well, let us find the area. How to find the area is we want to find the area. So probability, therefore, probability of a student between 160 and 180 is given by x 160 to 180. And we change that into z value. When we change it into z value, z for 160 is basically 0 0.4 to 1.2. OK? You see how nicely we change this um, is uh, the normal curve into a standard normal curve. So all we need to know is that what is the probability between this? How do we find that? Well, the technique that we're gonna use, we'll discuss that later, but right now you just remember if you want to find the area between 0 0.4 and 1.2, what you may want to try is that Z is less than or equal to 1.2 minus Z value is less than or equal to 0 0.4. Why do I do that? Well, let's go all the way at the bottom. There may be a different way to do this. You know, you may come up with a different idea, but I find, I think that this one is the easiest one. What you do is you take this Z, um, Z less than or equal to 1.2 and Z less than or equal to 0 0.4. Why do I do this less than or equal to? Why do I do? Why do I want to uh, figure out the value on the left side? When we say less than or equal to, we are talking about left side. Four, let's say four is there. Let's say one point two is there. And when I say less than one point two, I'm talking about this part right here. So on the left hand side, if I do this one, also I'm talking about something which is on the left. Now the question is why left, right? Why left? The reason is this. Let me go all the way down to my handout. Please remember this value, okay? We're trying to find the value of 1.2 and 0 0.4. 1.2 and 0 0.4. So come on, where is the table? Okay, it is the table, Z value. So in this is your Z curve, by the way. So you can see the table. This table gives the area of the Z curve on the left-hand side only. Let me repeat this. You will be provided this table in the exam. If there is any questions about normal distribution, it will be provided. What this Z value, some people call it Z score table or Z value table does is that it provides the probability or the area of the curve, area under the curve on the left hand side. For example, if Z equals zero point, let's say minus 0 0.4, for example, that means probability of Z 0 0.4 means we are talking about area on the left hand side. Now remember, we want to find probability of Z, which is less than or equal to 1.2 and then minus probability Z, which is less than or equal to 0 0.4 because we are talking about left area. Let us look at that 1.2. So Z value 1.2, okay, 1.2 positive means you go all the way bottom. 
one, where is one? So 1.2 means, 1.2 means 1.20. So look at this, 1.2 is right there and zero is right there. So this is the value that we're talking about. So it's almost 88 percentage. To be more precise, it's 0.8849. So let me write this down. So we want to find uh, Z value, which is on the left-hand side from 1.2, which is actually, we notice that it is 0 0.8849. And we want to find the Z value, which is uh, 0 0.4. So 0 0.4 positive. So 0 0.4 can be written as 0 0.4 and zero. You see 0 0.4 is right there, which is this. So this is uh, 0 0.6554. All we need to do is we need to subtract them, right? Okay, can you please remember this? Um, can you type in this in your uh, chat box? So this is 0 0.8849 and 0 0.6654. I may forget it, so let me, oh, I can do that. What I can do is maybe I can just copy and Okay, let me go all the way top. Anyway, it's not coming. Anyway, um, 0 So this value is 0 0.8849 minus this value is, I forget, can somebody tell me what is that? 6554, 0 0.6554. And when you subtract, how much do you get? Three three nine five. So this is 0 0.3395. In another word, the chances that, so this, this area is 0 0.3395. That means the probability that a student selected random in that class falls between 160 pound and 180 pound is this one, or you can write 33.95%. That's how we calculate. The nice thing about Z curve is that, you know, this no matter what kind of, uh, you know, normal curve is given, you can always transform this into Z curve, standard curve, and then you can use the table and find the probability. Now let's look at some of the benefit of this uh, Z curve. Okay, the benefit, the advantage of using Z score is that Z score are standardized, so they can be compared. For example, suppose that you know your score on an exam and a friend's score on his exam. Further, suppose that those scores are measured on a different scale or formula, and so you cannot compare them easily. But if you can convert both scores into Z score, because Z is always the standard, always like in Z score, mu is zero, mean is zero, it's a standard curve. So you can actually compare those uh, score easily. Do you know SAT or ZRE or ZMAT, for example? You know, these are the standard tests if you want to apply to a uh, university in the US and sometime in the in Canada, they require you to do these tests. And these tests, um, they use a different formula uh, to give you the score. 
But using the Z curve, if you transform those scores into Z score, then you can compare, you know, no matter what formula they use, what is what what you know um, rule they they use to figure out this uh, the the score or what scale they use, we can always compare with with the help of Z score. That's the benefit, anyway. Now let's look at one or two examples just for fun, okay? So let's try um, how to con how how to how to use the table to find the value. For example, example four part A. Suppose you want to find the probability where Z lies between zero and one point six eight. What it means is you are trying to find the area. Remember, this one is already a Z score, okay? And in Z score, mu is always zero. Now we want to find Z lies between zero and 1.65. So zero means here, Z is zero is there. And Z is 1.68 is here, let's say. We are trying to find this area. And this area gives us the probability. Let's try it just for fun. So this can be written as PZ 1.68 minus PZ 0. So PZ 1.68, let's, let's look at what is the value of that and what is the value of zero. We need to go all the way at the bottom. 1.68. Okay, positive 1.68. We are looking for, what we are trying to do is Z is 1.68 and Z is zero. Okay, 1.68 will be, 1.6 is here, as you can see, I'm gonna use a different color, let me use blue. 1.6 is here and eight, go all the way, eight is right there. So you go all the way here, this is the value which means 0 0.9535 minus zero. Zero is right here, which is 0 0.500. Okay, and if you subtract, how much do you get? That's the answer. So it is 0.95, okay. If I forget, remind me, okay? 0 0.9535. This value is 0 0.9535 minus this value is 0 0.5000. So if you subtract, what do you get? 0 0.4535. So that means, or approximately 45.35 percentage. So this area is represent the probability of 45.35 percentile of the whole uh, area. Any question? Okay, now we'll continue this. Uh, we know how to, I, I, you know, for the remaining, uh, I, I want you to try, try all of these by yourself at home, okay? You need to know how to use the Z table in order to uh, solve any problem in this normal uh, curve. So please practice this. Please try to understand how to use a Z table to find the probability if probability is given in a standard normal curve. Okay, if Z curve value is given, if Z value is given, how to find the probability? Try this by yourself. 